Well, it has been a full week of nearly nonstop football action. Biz Asia America has been looking at the business sides of the World Cup, but of course, keeping track of the scores as well. And on Friday, Costa Rica stunned Italy by squeezing out a one to nil win. That result statistically eliminated England from advancing in the tournament, breaking a lot of hearts here in the CCTV newsroom. Uh, France proved too much, though, for Switzerland in a high-scoring affair. And in the final match of the day, Ecuador held off Honduras to win 2-1. to one. So as we come to the close of the first full week of the World Cup, we figured we'd check in with our man on the ground and my buddy, Joel Richards. He's in Rio de Janeiro for us. He's been tracking not just the scores, Joel, and the highlights, but also what's been happening on the streets of Brazil, right? Uh, evening, Jessica from Rio, and a few hearts here in Rio broken as well, I must admit, after that England result. But uh, but a fantastic atmosphere here in Rio and Copacabana, very much the, the heart of where this World Cup is taking place. As we know, there are about around 600,000 supporters expected to, to travel to Brazil from abroad, and many of them choosing to come here, here to Rio, which is hosting around seven games, so very much the hub. Um, and, and lots of excitement, lots of supporters uh, really getting into the spirit of things, but of course some taking it a, a little too far. We saw it. Um, uh, many Chilean supporters who've made the, the visit, the, the trip to Rio, um, charging into the Maracanã for their game against Spain. Uh, over 80 were detained and, of course, uh, uh, really they pushed down one of, the, uh, one of the partition walls there in the media. Um, a great deal of confusion. In the end, not many people were really hurt. There were over 75 arrests, though. Um, one, one of those arrested said that he'd made the 7,000 round trip, 7,000 kilometer round trip, and uh, he'd looked for a ticket and they'd said it was $1,500 as the absolute cheapest that he could find, and he said there was no way that he was going to miss it. Well, it turns out he's going to miss out on the rest of the tournament because like his other um, compatriots, they've now been given just a few days to leave the country. Wow, hard to imagine too much uh, soccer fun there, uh, Joel. But how is the tournament looking in terms of President Dilma Rousseff's re-election chances? We know we've been talking about this uh, all week, that this is sort of a test, too, of uh, what she's been able to do to get ready for this tournament. Well, it is a major question because let's not forget there's a general election here in Brazil in October later this year. So really, the outcome of this, uh, this tournament, and of course not in sporting terms, but just in terms of uh, how she's viewed and how the organization and, and obviously the, the fallout of an, of an $11 billion uh, infrastructure investment will, will be very important. She was, uh, she was, there were insults um, directed her way in the first match when Brazil beat Croatia. Uh, she brushed it off and said that it was nothing compared to uh, the the, uh, what she went under, went through under military rule, um, and she'll, she'll certainly um, just uh, see that um, ride that wave, no doubt. But um, last year there were major um, protests here. The, the protests were in the millions, and it must be said that they've died down slightly. So while there are protests still in, and directed both at Dilma Rousseff and also at FIFA, um, they are now much more in the hundreds rather than in the thousands or the millions. Joel Richards, thanks so much for your time tonight from Rio de Janeiro. We appreciate you roughing it for us there at the tournament. Well, here in the U.S., fans are counting the hours until the big matchup against Portugal on Sunday. A victory would give the U.S. side a good chance of advancing to the next round. And while the football matchup looks to be a good one, their respective economies are far from equals. Let's take a look. With more than the world's largest economy, it dwarfs that of Portugal. The U.S. is not expected to grow much this year, a little over 2 percent, but that's twice what ec economists expect from Portugal. And unemployment is hardly a fair comparison. Portugal's jobless rate is nearly 15 percent more than twice the rate in the United States. 